Yeah, so the presentation's a story of our experiences in using behavioural driven development, ATDD, and specification by example. Um, what we found is that a lot of people who say they're doing BDD or say they're doing specification by example aren't really doing it and they're not getting the benefits out of those processes that would be envisaged. And we were in a similar situation, we went through a similar journey. So our presentation is describing that journey, describing where we started, what we hoped to get out of the, um, that transformation, actually what we got out of it, and how we changed things around. So we did, we, for example, we found that we had, um, we thought we were getting some of the benefits, but really what we were doing was just literally automating our tests. And we weren't getting the benefits that were, that were described from the, the original BDD approach. Um, Aslak Helisoy, who, who wrote the Cucumber Library, he wrote a blog post earlier on this year that, which said that Cucumber is the most misunderstood BDD um, collaboration tool because people were really just using Cucumber to automate tests in the same way that you would write tests in JUnit. And so people were claiming to do BDD just because they were using Cucumber, were really, they weren't getting the full benefits out of the BDD process. As I talked about in his presentation about these three different concepts of using BDD, one which is for gathering requirements in a collaborative way using specification by example, and then following that, using it as ATDD, automated test driven development through the development, development process, and then finally a, as a set of living documentation after you'd built the software. Now we weren't realizing those benefits, we were generally just automating tests literally using Cucumber, and those tests were unreadable, they were unmaintainable, they didn't describe what the system did, we were producing them in a collaborative manner, and we didn't realize that we were, we were sort of heading down this bad path. And so what this presentation is, is we're going to talk through that journey, talk through some of the changes we made, talk through some of the, um, the guidelines that we adopted that people can, can sort of take away and use in their own projects to avoid making some of the mistakes that we made. So we'll do a presentation which will describe the story um, and then after that we will uh, have a workshop and, and within the workshop we're, we're very welcome for people to bring along some of their own BDD tests if you're using Cucumber or um, Concordian or Fitness or any other sort of BDD style test automation tool we're very welcome for you to bring along your tests and we'll, we can use those in the workshop or alternatively we will have some examples that we will provide and people can then work through those examples to see if they can uh, avoid some of the pitfalls that, that we would describe and follow some of the, the guidelines and practices that we would think of and, um, and then we'll have a workshop for about an hour or so for people to try out some of those. So um, when uh, in BDD traditionally they talk about this term called the three amigos. The three amigos are the developer, the tester and the analyst so certainly this is very much aimed at any of those. Um, in addition um, this is also useful for anybody who's managing a development project um, because there's a certain amount of curation and ownership that needs to be given to the BDD process and certainly it's useful for uh, development managers or project managers to understand a bit about how BDD works so that they can adopt it on the projects that they're running.